Mary Magdalene is one of the most misunderstood characters in the Bible. She has been identified as all her Marys, as a heinous sinner, and even as a prostitute. This idea is so widespread that it has made it into common culture. For instance, being mentioned in TV shows such as The Simpsons. In this video, we will look at the real Mary and see why she got this reputation. Mary Magdalene is one of the most mentioned women in the New Testament, and yet not a lot is known about her. What is known about her is that she's described as being liberated from seven spirits by Jesus. She was one of Jesus' disciples. We know where she came from. It's a common misconception that Magdalene is just her surname, but the Bible actually calls her the Magdalene, which identifies her with her place of birth. Magdala means tower or castle, and in the time of Christ was a thriving, populous town on the coast of Galilee, about three miles from Capernaum. She seems to have been a prominent figure among Jesus' fellow female followers, coming first in nearly every list that she's in. She stayed to watch Jesus' execution, along with all her followers, including his earthly mother and one apostle, and she was the first person recorded to have met Jesus after his resurrection. But there are so many important facts that we don't know about her, including her age and if she had any family connections. So this is pretty much everything that is known about Mary. So you might wonder, how on earth did she get labelled as a prostitute among other things? Well, the answer is simple, and the answer is the Roman Catholic Church. The Catholic Church seemingly adopted this view of Mary during the Middle Ages. In the 6th century, Pope Gregory the Great simply and wrongly connected Mary Magdalene to the unnamed sinner who washed Jesus' feet with her hair in Luke, as well as Mary of Bethany who anoints Jesus' feet with nard in the Gospel of John. In a sermon, the Pope used this view of Mary to illustrate how even the worst type of person imaginable could be forgiven by Jesus a Christian belief which could have easily been taught using an other figure. This confusion was furthered by Pope Leo, who proposed that the reason Mary and the sinner found in Luke were the same person is because Mary had seven demons and the woman appears in Luke chapter 7. Mary is first mentioned then in Luke chapter 8. The Catholic Church Furler fastened the smear upon Mary Magdalene when at Naples in 1324 it established its first Magdalene House for the rescue and maintenance of fallen women. Because of this, this unflattering view of Mary Magdalene spread into secular culture, and during the Renaissance many artists and painters built upon this concept, and it inspired works of art, further embedding the idea into the collective psyche of the West. At this point you might be wondering, if this view is so wrong, why do people still believe it? Well, that's because it was only fairly recently that this error was officially corrected. The Catholic Church, realizing the fault, eventually in 1969, 1,378 years after Gregory fused three New Testament women into Mary Magdalene, and more than 450 years since scholars officially rejected the mix-up of characters, the Church officially corrected this mistake. Even so, the legend of the repentant prostitute still exercises a stronghold on the public imagination. Whatever your thoughts are on the church and Christianity, the sad part about all this is that this mistake denied centuries of Christian history a strong female role model. As well if you think about it, in the eyes of the church, Mary should have been quite a remarkable woman. She left her home to follow Jesus and traveled with the other disciples. She was courageous, being one of the few followers who did not flee and stayed for the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. And while the disciples were busy locking themselves in a room for the fear of the Jewish authorities, she was at the tomb and is recorded as being the first person to meet the risen Christ. This is especially striking as in those days, in the Middle East, a woman's testimony was deemed worthless, and yet she was the first person to testify about the risen Saviour. Because of this mistake, women in the previous centuries really missed out, all thanks to the idle words of a pope, 
And although the teaching has been rectified today, the myths about Mary don't seem to be going away anytime soon. Thank you very much for watching. For more, please stay tuned, and of course, make sure to subscribe to Well Actually.